Mass nor English, 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 English. Pretending to be good. Hey, pretending to be good, good, good. Just pretending to be good. Hey, pretending to be good, good. I just pretending to care about people. 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 Pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. I'm pretending to be good. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. I have with us Mr. Victor Lewis, and Mr. Victor Lewis is a resident of St. Joseph, Barbados. Um, he is a social activist. He's retired. I really want to talk specifically to what is happening in St. Joseph. That is not something, given my backdrop, given my training, that I could just would have sat back and allowed to happen. Of course, I frequent the beach. That's an area that I enjoy. It's part of my life, you know, 24-7. So on that day in question, I was leaving the area of Powell Spring in the Bashiva area, and I went over to the Joseph area as normal to say I'm going to go and catch some crabs and see if I can go and catch a, a crab cobali. So when I got to the area there, I saw the activity going, and I, you know, clearly uh, technical ed education is that's my field, that's my specialty. So when I would have seen the construction going on, I clearly could have observed that something that is happening here does not appear correct. What appears to be happening is that these individuals are building walls to block us out from entering the area of Joseph. So I question, you know, the individuals in the area in terms of, um, you know, identifying as the case may be. But what was said to me is that what is happening here is against our conscience. It is against my conscience to do it. He said, in addition to that, what was said to us is that if the folks from around the area knock the walls down, build them back up. I said, well, you know, um, this can't be right. So at the same time, I put down my fishing lines. I tell him, well, you hold on, take it easy. You hold on. So I left from there back home, took up my phone. Of course, you know, the camera's on it. Did a video. And here we are today, several videos after. I was doing a bit of research in this particular um, dimension relative to the activities at um, Joe's River. And I saw a video that says one year ago. And I said, boy, Victor, one year ago, this happened, and still we are at this stage in 2024. I think it is very unfortunate. I will want to arrive at where we are at this particular point in time, because the primary focus of my presence here is to bring you up to date as to where we are at with this Georgia project. Recent documents sent to me by Mr. Gregory Nichols, who is the lawyer representing and of course, you know, you would have heard relative to the whole idea of the injunction and the stopping of work, as would have been shown here just now in the um, in the pic. Um, there, there, there was a photo there just now showing the area of the bridge. That photo, the injunction brought stopped all activity relative to this aspect of the project. Now, as far as my understanding carries me the project entails the renovation of the old edge water building and this other dimension of the project to me caught me off guard it caught many individuals off guard because it's hard to believe that a project of this magnitude affecting us could have been done without social impact studies or environmental impact studies this one, technically speaking, caught us off guard. It caught me with my pants down when I saw what was happening there. And I know it would have affected me. It would have affected hikers. It would have affected students from Aline School, 
from, from St. Lydia Primary, hikers, I mean, the whole gamut. So that's, and so you sought, you were part of that team that sought an injunction and got this work to stop. And we want to commend you and the team that worked with you on this, because I, I think, I think that is, that is awesome Barbados. And that, that's what I call the two, four, six people power. A recent, I would have received some documents from, you know, Mr. Gregory Nichols relative to the last proposal because there were many proposals when i looked through the documents i responded to him and said that i do not agree with the current proposal and this is for two main reasons of which i would want to elaborate on when i looked at the document and i don't know if you can bring it up showing the um plan for the development of the area in terms of where the well, wellness house, etc., would be. On that particular document, there is a section there called established pathway. When I looked at that document, it really baffled my mind to know that all over the years that we use Joe's River, the pathway shown on that document as the established pathway. Established meaning what we have been using, what you and I, all visitors and visitors would have been using all over the years. What's shown in that document is incorrect. The document is either fictitious or conveniently designed to deceive us. So when you look at that document and you see there on the top <laughs> right, just before the actual sign there showing the direction in terms of north, south, east, and west. You will see that area there saying established pathway. You can just bring your bring your mouse down on the right and you will see this sign there showing established pathway. That is wrong. I know that, that the Attorney General, his specialty is in law. I know that Mr. Nichols, his specialty is also in law. So they may not be so well versed. They may not be so well versed in terms of analyzing a document such as that. But that area that shows currently established pathway is totally incorrect. How could I identify with a document such as that? When I know it is wrong because our established pathway took us under the bridge as shown by the arrow and we entered into the gully from the landward side of the bridge and not the seaward side. I don't know how Mr. Nichols or Mr. Marshall could look at that document and expect me to approve it. It is wrong. Now, if you were look closer at the document, the portion there shown in red, that portion of the document shows what is intended to be our pathway. That pathway leads to Teacup and Saucer, and it also intends to put us out to the Joe's River Gully at the end of the river by the sea. Now, if I'm going hiking, what calling I got down at the end of the river, down by the sea, and my intention is to go up through the gully. Now, what even makes it worse, and what bothers me to some extent, is that Mr. Marshall sat with us, our constituency representative sat with us and agreed that no one should be walking across those borders to enter in to the Jewels River Gully. He said, it is dangerous, it is wrong, don't do it. But Mr. Marshall then tell me, when we use that path and we end up at the bottom of the Jewels River Gully, how are we gonna get back to the landward side of the bridge? That's the side that we have used from time immemorial because it is safe. We established that because it is safe. And as we would have said as a group over the course of time, that our focus is for free and safe access, not only to Joe Zipper Gully, but also to the Cup and Saucer. It must not only be accessible, but it must be safe. So how in the world do you know that it is unsafe to travel across the borders, and yet you're asking us to do it? When you're coming from the area at the mouth of the gully, and you're traveling upstream, you have to pass under the bridge. 
There are no other options. There are borders to the left. That's the same borders that Mr. Um, Marshall spoke about. And then there are borders to the right. And in the middle is a hole called Judy Hall, where a lady drowned. What call did I have to ask anyone to be using that path when I know borders on the left, borders on the right. Walking across those borders is dangerous. Walking to Judy Hall, of course, that is suicidal. Maybe you now you and me go down there during this period of time during the dry season, and you may only see a few holes of water. But when you know that the rainy season comes in, and just after the rainy season, you have water gushing to under the bridge. So you can't pass through there, neither cross the rocks, or borders on the left, or borders on the right, or to Judy Hall. Tell me, when individuals go to hike, how are they going to get safely from the lower section as the drawing shows up to the river? Mr. Marshall, he knows within himself that this proposal is an injustice to the people of Barbados, not just to St. George. There are many hikers from all over the island that come and enjoy that. There are many visitors that come to our country and enjoy that. Tell me, are we making something that is safe for the people that will use it? Tell me, when individuals go there, can they safely access the river mouth at the point of entrance where we know that it is safe? Our established point of entry was on the landward side of the bridge, not the seaward side. And we did that because it is safe. And we've established that as a people all over the years. I don't know how come all of a sudden Mr. Marshall would think that this proposal is one that Victor should accept and allow to flow. But the outcome of this has nothing to do with Victor Lewis. This has something to do with the people of Barbados, people that we have to set a platform where they can safely mobilize all of these divisions of ledger activities. When you go to Tea Cup and Saucer, and I believe that the injunction, because I, I ask for the injunction so I can read it to have an understanding as to what it is saying. When I said, I do not support this proposal. Greg, we said, Victor, I don't understand what you're saying. I don't understand what you are explaining to us, what you're explaining to me, sorry. So what I'll do, I will meet you on site. All like now I'm still waiting for our attorney, Gregory Nichols, to arrive at Joe's River. He said, Victor, I'll meet you there at three o'clock. I'm still waiting on Mr. Nichols to explain to him why this proposal I do not accept. Mr. Nichols said, Victor, I don't understand what you're explaining to me on the phone. So what I'll do, I'll meet with you on site on Sunday at three o'clock. I am oh. still waiting on Mr. Nichols. I called him from there. Christopher Oliver, the joint person with me with the injunction, also called him from there. I don't know if he returned the call afterwards to Oliver, but he didn't answer that call from Mr. Oliver on site. He didn't answer my call from me on site. And up until now, I haven't heard from Mr. Nichols with respect to that visit that we were supposed to have, where I can explain to him what is wrong with the proposal. For those who would have seen the couple of there it is. And I don't know if a picture would have been taken relative to, you know, what transpired at Teacup and Saucer in terms of the cutting of the pathway. But if you go to the Powell Spring area and take a view westward, you will see a path cut from that area there, that point, Teacup and Saucer. And it is shown there on the plan that the proposal is that they will cut a path for us from the cup and saucer, which you can see shown on the um, shown on the plan, very steep. You can understand the word saying very steep, and you can build a stairs going down from the cup and saucer, vertical. The pathway is cut vertical. Now, to begin with, if I may backtrack a bit, 
when this injunction was given, I am assuming that the injunction was given to stop activity relative to the access to Teacup and Saucer and the Joseph Gully. So I think it was very interesting that someone can go and breach the injunction by cutting a path through the great trees down to music. And don't talk about music. Music is the most dangerous beach that you could ever think of in the area of Bashi. And the recommendation here is that a stairs will be built on an area that is very steep, where there is much rise and little run, where it is very tall and little distance to go out. So you call that a breakneck step. Individuals may get away with it if you're going to wind here and wind there. You know, when you're coming up the hill and the old truck is working too well, you wind to the left and you wind to the right and you wind there, and you make it. But you can't wind in there. That is total breakneck to begin with. When you look at where they intend to put us in the area of music in 2009, I, along with Terry Eiffel, we were recipients from the Governor General for a bravery medal because we saved a couple from drowning in that wow. same area. Let me see if we can find a picture because I know um, we went there today with Mr. Lewis because I wanted to see it for myself so that mm -hmm. I have a proper understanding of what this gentleman is saying to yes. us tonight. Is it reasonable what the developers are asking versus what um, what the, the citizens want? You know, I wanted to see for myself and let me tell you, it is quite treacherous where they want this the stairs to, to be put and the mm -hmm. drop. You know, so let me see. I think we have, we should have a picture. Oh, yes, that's it. That's it. That's it. Look at it. Look how steep that is. And, you know, the proposal is, you know, that we will build steps for Beijing to go down to that point. Now, going down the steps, that's suicide to begin with. If the NCC can approve for this construction to take place, putting people into harm's way by allowing them to frequent an area which we know all over the years is the most dangerous place in Bathsheba. How could we make a recommendation that you're going to be asking individuals to frequent the most dangerous beach you could ever think of? It takes you up and takes you where? It's all over. Hello, goodbye. And let me commend, you know, Brother Ronnie Yeward for identifying with it, at least non-city, for others not self. We cannot just sit back and see people drowning and accept it where we know we could have handled the waters. But when you're going to go and come and set up an environment to put people into harm's way, how can I approve a project such as that? It is wrong. It's an injustice to the people of Barbados and must not be accepted by us how could you see things like that happening in you you know of the area and still would look at a proposal such as that and expect victor lewis of all people to accept it no it is wrong before we go on let, let's hear um sir roy trotman um and and let's just hear his views on on this whole thing here of course we love visitors and then of i'm course gonna we ask want to do this. business with them but we don't love visitors to take advantage of our patrimony. We love them, but we don't love them to kick us about. And that message has to be clear. Arguing that it's all right because some people will get work. I imagine they mean that we will find some jobs for some people to do gardening. If we are going back, to judging the success of our people, judging the success of our Bathsheba people, purely on whether we are able to get a job as a gardener or to get a job as a maid, then in fact we have achieved nothing. The train line is government land because government was not going to build a train line to run from Belle Plaine to Bridgetown and come back doing that on somebody else's land. It is the land, the property of the government of Barbados on behalf of the people of Barbados. That's 
Sir Roy Trotman. Sir Roy Trotman. And so you had invited him, um, uh, Mr. Lewis? Yes, ma'am. I, I, I would have gone to Sir Roy, and I know that Sir Roy lived in the Hizwe area all over the years. You know, he was being a very active part and really identified with all the activities in the area of, of, of St. Joseph. You know, he was a very active individual involved in the trade union movement. And he willingly accepted to be present with us and to give us advice, you know, in this particular direction. A wonderful man. Let me just bring into the studio uh, Mr. Matthew Holder. He is a hike master, a master to me, a master of masters, okay? <laughs> when you want to go hiking, especially if you're a beginner, you really need to go with Mr. Holder, right? I will tell you, my first hike, was with Mr. Matthew Holder and it was to Joe's River. And let me tell you, I, I mean, I was all excited. I was ready to go, you know, Mr. Lewis, I was ready to go. And I tell you, halfway into the thing, I wanted to turn back. I was so tired, but I found it was very invigorating. I love the rush, the hearing the water, right? And uh, Mr. Mr. Holder and his lovely wife, they helped me so much on this on the trip. He was getting us over, you know, and 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 we were trying. At first, we were trying not to get wet, trying to walk on the stones. Eventually, we gave up. And at one time, people they sure. looked around and they did not see me. I was down in the water, <laughs> like I had a baptism. <laughs> and I looked up. And I let me tell you, all I, I saw people when I got got back up and Matthew got me and pulled me up. I saw everybody was like, huh? and then they started laughing at me. You know, we had fun. <laughs> we had quite a lot of fun. We had cookouts. We, you know, we've been there and it's, you know, after the hikes and it's really invigorating. And I loved it. I love hiking. And uh, Joe's River is honestly, guys, it's one of my fa it's my favorite hike of all of them. We've been to Monkey Jump and all of these other crazy ones, but I love, love, love Joe's River. So that's me um, introducing um, Mr. Matthew Holder there. Okay, Mr. Holder, welcome to the Marcia Week Show. Good night to one. Good night to all. Good night, Victor good to see you. I was given the title Hike Master. I did not give that to myself, but I accept it. The whole Joe's River um, contention is really a, a heartbreaking thing for me. I can say from from a youngster, I, I used to go in the gully. All the guys in, in, in the neighborhood my brothers and that kind of stuff fishing and then I I came to the point where I could do it myself and I went on my own. There's something now that I call parkour. And that is a kind of a invigorating a lot of movement, exercising, jumping, doing a lot of whole lot of stuff. And I think that that parkour thing, people coming up with it, they're, they're pretty late with that because I used to do that in the gully. I did that from Geisel to Bashiba. And you're jumping from rock to rock and just running down through the gully. So it's a place that is near and dear to my heart and I would say to our hearts. Um, I've seen videos on that gully from visitors they were really buoyed up about the beauty of the gully, the landscape, everything about it is just unique. And this fight, I would say that I have never really started a fight in my life. <laughs> and here tonight, I have not started this one either. I think Victor is the man that started this fight. But I can honestly say that I have joined the fight because I think it is a worthwhile fight. And it is not about self. It is not that you're fighting to take someone's property. All that I would say that we're asking for is access 
and permission. Two things. Yes, it is private property, as Saroy just said there, and this is what I had all, always known, that that path right across, which is the, the old train line, I have always understood that to be government property. That's where the train ran. And I had heard from a historian, I think it is Trevor Marshall or Dr. Henderson Carter. One of the two of them said that Teacup and Saucer was the place where the people would wait for the train or, or the conductor or something for the people. That's where the people stayed until the train came. I never knew that. I, I knew Teacup and Saucer there, you know, for all this time. Well, it's a beautiful vantage point, so I would like to assume, you know, that it, that makes sense. Listen, it is the most breathtaking thing that you can see earlier morning. You know what it is to go there and see the sun rising? I will jump to this thing now where I call my birthright. However much people, if it has gone past a thousand now, I am sure that out of this thousand people that are viewing, many of them would have heard about Esau selling his birthright. This is not Esau selling his birthright, no. But this is someone buying my birthright without my knowledge. So why should someone be given permission to buy my right to the access that was there for however long Barbados was existing. From the time that bridge was built, access was there because it belonged to the government. People always traverse the gully. And as I was told yesterday, when the bus leave Bathsheba, the spike stone bus, when the spike stone bus leave Bathsheba and you are late for that bus, obviously, you can run across the bridge and go into cattle wash and wait for the bus. So if access is denied to people that still have to catch a bus and you could run through there and get into cattle wash and get to the first bus stop, if that is denied, you know what you have to do? They have to go down on the beach or run across the wet sand and the wet rocks and most likely sprain the ankle or something and god forbid that music is up well, let me tell you <laughs> it is all over wherever you want to go for sure you're, you're not going to get there because you see you see those steps that are proposed music will remove those steps music the waves, the, the, the beating, the ponging of the waves down in there on the rocks, it is like music. Ah, because I heard Mr. Lewis saying it, but I couldn't tell <laughs> exactly what he said. So you're saying, you're saying that even the very stairs, and this is where, you know, Mr. Holder and Mr. Lewis, that is so important for um, these developers and the government and everybody who is involved, listen to the local people. Listen to the Sir Roy um, Trotman who lived there. Listen to Mr. Lewis. Listen to um, Hype Master Matthew Holder. Listen to the people. They're telling you this is a very dangerous sea that is there. It's going to drag people out. Music going to going to wreak havoc on the people. Listen, it's dangerous. You gotta listen to the people, and that's the kind of the social studies and the environmental studies that needed to be done before this project. But go ahead, Mr. Holder. Right. So, to deny people this access, it is not a good thing. I don't have any problem with anyone coming to Barbados to invest, to spend their money. That is how our economy turns. So why would right-thinking people oppose such things? The only reason 
such things should be opposed is if it's going to take away the rights and the privileges that people had for centuries. I haven't heard anyone say anything about politics or anything, but I'm, I'm going to say I'm not political. This has nothing to do with politics. I am not, I'm not into politics. I'm into hiking. So yeah. my thing is now we, as the descendants of slaves, I would want to believe that all of us would know what I'm talking about. We are the descendants of slaves. Why are we allowing the descendants of the slave masters to still carry on this kind of behavior? I thought we went into independence and now republicanism and cutting off the last vestiges of the crown. Why are we still doing these things? Why are we allowing these things to pop up their head and people think that if you oppose something, you're against the government. It has nothing to do with the government. This is about someone with very deep pockets, deep and wide pockets, coming and pouring their monies out and saying, this is what I want. Such things should not be allowed to go on. It has nothing to do with how deep your pocket is. This is the boundary here. People travel this area for centuries. Access must be must continue to be given. That's all. I do not see why you would need to spend 10 cents to give permission or access. I'm glad you brought up the whole issue that this is not a political no, no. point, that this is not a political issue. It is not. It really is not. And, and no, no one here is against development. Development is good. But what Mr. Lewis and, and Matthew, um, Ma Mr. Holder, what, the, what, what, what we're all saying is that, listen, we, could, we can coexist. Isn't that what you're saying, Mr. Lewis? We can coexist, but we Absolutely. need to, to acknowledge what is custom? What was there before? Remember, if you look at the, the history of this, that after emancipation, this was a river that a lot of our foreparents, our ancestors used to use this river, whether it be for washing or whatever it is, okay? This is something that are our ancestors, this is what they, they, they know, this path that they are trying to close off from us, our ancestors traversed it, people. But if I may comment, yes, sir. You know, um, you know, a question was asked just now. I saw it come up on the screen. You know, it's a very valid question that I would like to respond to. There's a particular trend that I would have seen in all the proposals that were made over the past year. And if you can look at the common trend, now we begin with the intention to build a wall on the left and we are going from Bathsheba to Catawash. So you're going to build a wall, a wall on the left and you're going to build columns on the right and put in a gate. So the intention there was to block us out. That's number one. Number two, a recommendation was made that a barrier be placed along our train line, the people of Barbados, the recommendation was made by the developers to put a barrier across our train line to stop us from driving in where we doing our cookouts and the little picnic and you know, etc. You cannot drive down there anymore. So a developer comes from all in a way and on our land wants to put a barrier across to stop vehicular traffic from arriving at this point where we could just take all of our stuff and go and do our little cookout. Now, that would not only stop vehicular traffic, but it would inhibit or discourage pedestrian traffic coming to the Joseph area. Number three, there was a proposal to use what we call, what I may call a flyover bridge 
from Tikop and so on, so going westward that will bring you and land you down land seaward side of the bridge. Now, another proposal for our stairway to be built, taking you to the seaward side of the bridge. And this particular one that I want all the thousands of people online to listen to. And wherever you are, take your seat because this one hurt me. When the little children of our country, they could have been from small town or Hillswick or Cleveland Hill or Bathsheba or St. Elizabeth up my side, would be playing under the bridge in healthy activity. And their little pools of water with their little nets, catching a little queer fish and catching a little thousands as the case may be, and enjoying themselves in the water. This is what I am accustomed to for the past 28 years at Allen School. And a developer to this country becomes furious and angry because of the presence of those children under the bridge. If there's one thing that keeps me on this project, if there's one thing that will continue to motivate me, if there's one thing that allows me to have that energy every day to step out and challenge what is going on is this particular one. When we can think of the children of our country being subjected to such psychological torture by a man outside of Barbados under the leadership of Mia Amor Mordi. It is wrong, it is injustice, and it must not be accepted. Christopher Oliver made a statement that always resonates with me, a burning statement. Christopher said, Victor, this man don't want one about there. Meaning that this gentleman in question does not want any of us to be on the landward side of the bridge. A few Sundays ago, McDonald Barrow and I, another gentleman that really supports the activity, he was there with me. And we went below the bridge. Just think of the bridge. The bridge has four columns. One on the extreme east, one on the extreme west, and two between, leaving three spaces. The intentions by the developers is to block the first area with a seven feet high fence with a gate on the column number one and column number two. Between column number two and column number three, we can have access around column number two to the point where we normally enter and where it is safe for us to enter. But McDonald and I, we agreed on that. We said, no stairs on the cup and saucer, yeah. leave it just as it is, and we will not be entering out between columns one and two. We will make it two columns two and three because yeah. columns three and four is where the water travels. But columns two and three also detain, descend steep. So we were going to make a recommendation that we travel between column two and three to the point where we establish our entry because it is safe. But Christopher threw it out the window. Christopher said to me, and I must sympathize with Gregory Nichols and our constituency rep, dear Marshall. They would have sat with us on several occasions. They, may, they have made significant effort in coming up with a solution to this matter. I must give it to them that they tried. But great, but Christopher concluded by saying that this man does not want us around. Meaning, we have no right to be frequenting the area of the landward side of the bridge. But of course, if we're going to hike, the actual 
barrier, the actual deterrent is the fact now that we've got to travel across big borders or come to Judy Hall. We either drown or we crash. So that is a deterrent. And that has been projected to us that I am not refusing you, but I am putting a significant physical or psychological barrier in your way. So we have made a proposal that will work. But of course, as Christopher rightly said, the man don't want us around. So what are we going to do? I don't think we can call on, on Mr. Nichols or Mr. Marshall. They would have done their best. They would have tried their best. They have made a significant effort. I must give it to them. Let's make a call to me I'm more Marty. And see what she has to say. Do you agree with Mr. Lewis? Yes, I don't, I don't have a, a problem with that. I know the place like the back of my hand. So as he was talking about it, I was visualizing it and I, I am in full agreement with that. I don't have no problem with that at all. Access underneath the bridge where it is safe for traveling, you know, I, I am in full agreement with it. And yeah. the, the co the coexistence, the coexistence is is important. It is also important to know that all of the previous owners of Edgewater Hotel never had a problem with people passing through there. Never. Everybody accepted the fact that this is some place that locals and visitors alike travel and no one has never erected anything to, to to stop anyone from passing. So I don't know why um, someone would want to do that now. And I don't know why it would be allowed to happen. Yes. You see the children here playing. Um, you know, my son was here as well with us. And we were all swinging across. Of course, I didn't do that part. <laughs> but, right, Matthew, but the children have fun there and, and yeah. um, we have little ones and they, they navigated well, you know, little boys and little girls. And we had even a father with a baby in hand and it was mm -hmm. beautiful and, and I really love it and I think that yeah. it needs to be preserved and, and that yeah. access needs to, need to be there and we need to be able to come to some kind of amicable resolution and, and something that we can coexist. I think that that is important. But let me ask you again, Matthew. Matthew, yeah. the section that um, Mr. Lewis uh, um, was speaking about um, tonight, where he believes the treasures, where the boulders are, you were telling me that, um, you know, someone um, that you're close to, you had a, a photo shoot in the area and you, you were scared. Uh, could you talk? Is it okay yeah. for you to talk about that? Yeah, ma'am. That was my daughter. She had um, to do a photo shoot for her class. She's doing, it was a photography thing at BCC. That She had to do this thing for her portfolio. She said it has to be, you know, like at the beach or something with water that they need to capture different elements of water and that kind of stuff. So what better place to go than Rose River? I took her down there under the bridge and she was doing her thing and I'm watching her, especially when she started to approach what is known as Judy Hole, because it is not something that you can get out of just so because it is slippery and the, the embankment, it is not much that you can walk on. So to be proposing for something for people to be going in that direction tells me that, you know, you most likely don't care about who comes in here. You're just pushing them, pushing them out. But for my daughter, I, I really had to keep my eyes on her at that stage, you know, she keeps saying, yes, daddy, I, I, I'm okay. I, I'm not going too far over there and that kind of stuff. But it wasn't a wrong, or I, actually, I don't know how many years ago it was that the girl Judy drowned in there. 
but I knew for sure that someone had drowned in that in that hole. And that's the hole that they're proposing that we pass through. Yeah, and that you have to be navigating around. Navigating around. It's that's not correct. That is unjust. That is not right. And that cannot happen here in Barbados. And I want the Barbadian people, um, all of us, all of us Barbadians, to say no, 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 it is not going to happen. It's not gonna happen and we will have we will have the access that we are customary to. And right there under the bridge between the column two and three is what we want. Because that is what is safe for our people. That's it. That's that's yeah. that's that's just what I believe. Let me hear the people. I would I would make this this plead right now, right? That out of the thousand or more people that are on here now listening, if you or anyone that you know has ever been to Bathsheba. Actually, you don't even have to have been to Bathsheba or whatever the case may be. We need people to submit letters. Just mm. write something stating how you feel about people being given access to or rather denying locals and visitors. And I, you know, coming home this evening, <laughs> Marcy, I thank you for calling me, right? Because really and truly, I was, right, that is me there doing something. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's right. me, that's me, that's me. <laughs> Go yeah, ahead. That's the, that's the crew there. This is affecting the unborn, you know. The unborn has no knowledge of this thing, but when they come into this world, they will come and find a place that you cannot go any further, thus far and no further. Visitors that would have traversed that place, they will come back to Barbados and find that they cannot go in this direction anymore. But yet, tourism is our business. Why aren't we playing our part? Why are we allowing people to do such a thing? So the plea is, write a letter. Put your feelings on paper and send it to an email address. I can give my email address that I can pass it, and I will pass it on to the relevant people we need to, to, to ramp up this thing in, in, in the form of letters, signatures, signatories to, to something to show that this thing ought not to go on and it has nothing to do with the size of people's pocket. It has to do with the barbarian people. If the people doesn't want this, then no amount of money should supersede the conscience of the people. This is a democratic country. Why should money dictate what happens? So I would say I can give my email address, Marcia, if you can write it down yes. and then put yes. it on the screen or something. <laughs> come Sunday, we are going to see, this is Sunday, next week, Sunday, next week, Sunday, would that be, is that April, um, next week, Sunday, um, I, I, it's going to be um, April the 7th, April the 7th, we are going to seek permission to do a motorcade, we are going to meet there at St. Elizabeth School, and then we are going to drive in a motorcade with our speaker, and talk to the people in the villages and then when we get to our destination we will have some speeches and mr lewis um mm -hmm. promised us a <laughs> no 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 we will we will cook together <laughs> we will cook together we will yes. cook together there so listen out listen out for that but mr franklin that means mr mr um lewis is taking you on on this suggestion that we do, we come to support the people in St. Joseph. Welcome, Mr. Franklin. What are your thoughts about uh, the, what you're hearing tonight? 
good night everyone it is it is not easy hearing what is happening and it is not here easy listening to hearing that our people are representatives people who put themselves up to represent us either pro bono as a lawyer or as a representative and not doing their best i heard um gentlemen saying that um that they do their best no they did not no they did not they tried to make you believe they were doing their best all right because let me tell you what little bit i know you have the right to be there you have a right to be across that property because it has been always in existence and nobody can take it away from you and the, the, the existing right of where is one that you must have it is what the law allows you to have that is why the people at edgewater never moved never tried to move it because not that they were um loving black people or anything like that it is that the law didn't allow them to take it away the law does not allow these people to take it away either unless the government of barbados give them permission to do so all right so that is what it's all about. So when you hear the talking about well, they, they did their best and they tried their best, no, they did not. They deceive you into believing that they were doing their best. Beware of Greeks bearing gifts, especially when those uh, uh, but the gifts in this case, sorry, is um free legal advice and free legal representation. What should happen here, right? Those people should design their project around the system and and, and uh, around the existing conditions that we have yes we shouldn't be trying to move anything that there, 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 there's so much technology in the world that mind you they do not want you there they didn't even want you in the dangerous area because if they make it possible that only you could go to the dangerous area you will not go so you will not have any access to any area whatsoever that is what it is all about they don't want to see these black faces down there unless the black faces bring drinks to you I'm wearing some foolish gallop uniform to look like an idiot and there and, and you walk around the place um like in some monkey suit that they, they want they, 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 that's what they want for the people back you know i don't normally agree with sir roy trotman you know and but when i saw the clip he was saying something that i can agree with for the first time in a long time so when me and sir roy agree you know something gonna be wrong <laughs> you know this development can exist and you can coexist. All they have to do is to design, as I said, design their project, taking into consideration the existing conditions. You don't need to compromise. You don't need to come and say, well, look, we will try to amend here and go around this spot and do anything. Leave me as we are so that you and you can go and do your thing, but leave us. Other projects exist, the, the, the Edgewater exists, and they didn't have a problem. Why would you have a problem? use the area that is available for you to use not the one that we have locals have rights and and where you are and i and i understand business like to make peace right but sometimes peace comes at the end of a gun you know people fight wars to get peace you know and you have to sit down and decide well, look, we can fight this we are not going to sit down and take what you give us um, and who minions you send to deceive us and uh, bear those Greeks bearing gifts and to, de and to deceive us into believing that they're doing us favors, they're not. They are cooperating with the, the developer, whoever it is, because up to now, I don't know who this developer is, you know. Do you? I hear people say a man or a woman. No, it got to be a woman or a man. It can't be. So it, it has to be somebody. So you you should be guessing. You should see that this this person should come to you people up there and say, "Well, look, we are doing this project, and um, I know you got an existing thing, but my concept, and we will show him why it can't work." Let come and talk to us. Where he gonna send this representative, the third representative, the fourth representative, and an attorney general? Because that attorney general was not out there doing your bidding as your parliamentary representative. You were out there fighting. He came along reluctantly when people called him out, and then he said. Oh, he had asked the permission, permission to step aside. As attorney. You don't step aside as Attorney General in Barbados. You do the right thing for the people of your constituency. Those are the people who like elected you. The Attorney General is not a senator. He has his first and foremost duty is to the people of his constituency because 
if you did not put him there, he would not be an attorney general today. He will not be anything today. But unfortunately for the people of St. Joseph, they always put their trust, except in one instance when they be let Maisie Barkovac in the Barbados Labour Party, who has deceived them. St. Joseph and St. John was probably the, the, um, the, the, the least developed areas in Barbados. And, the, and no, they want to put some development, but they want to take away the areas that the locals enjoy. They don't want you to enjoy anything. They don't want you to have anything of yours. They're coming to Barbados. See Barbados having an area of recreation. And you want to take that from them too? That is, that is, that is not on. You've got to tell the... the and, and let me tell you something. This development cannot happen unless the Prime Minister approve it. So who is it? You think the Attorney General going to go against the Prime Minister? He be tricking you. This, the, under the planning development, the Prime Minister is the Minister for Planning. So she has to give permission. And if she wanted to, and, and if she was fair and decent and reasonable, she would have come to the people first before anybody put a cement block up on the sand or uh, 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 a shovel of marl up there. She should have come to the people to find out what the area was. But you know what we are in the Barbados? This government is like a prostitute working up for whoever pays. So once you got the money, you will get the meat. And that is what is happening here. That is what you see happening up to just yesterday when they were planning to go before the house to, to do this power government who spend every cent they get as soon as they get it. So this is just this is just money. They don't care anything about you. You're going to vote next time and jump up in the platform and wear red shirts. This is all, all about. Don't talk about. I hear you fellas say he ain't got he in the politics. You better get in some because that is what is working. You are political. Everybody political. And you got to be political in your own interest. It ain't, ain't going to be B or D. It could be unless the B is Bashiba. But you got to be political in your own interest. Because if you don't, you will end up there repelling down that cliff on a rope. Because that's all they will leave for you. If, and then the left side rope dangling for you to come back up. It is a sad day, and I, I just can't believe I, I This has to be reversed, I tell you. Um, I'm seeing Mr. Nigel Newton um, on as well. And um, Mr. Newton, what, um, you know, what are your thoughts about what you're hearing um, here tonight? I read from his document, and I'm just going to read quotes again. This document should be, should be required reading for every Barbadian if I had my way. He said, sadly, our political administrators, aided and abetted by the traditional white elite, believe that they have an absolute right to do as they please when and however they choose we the people however must never fail to inform the political class that there is a limit to power and that we the people will hold them accountable and remove them as necessary mr newton what are your thoughts about what you've heard this evening sir good night uh, Marcia and all the members of the people's opposition. To a certain extent, I am so baffled, so hurt, so disappointed. Everything that is not good, I am experiencing it now because of the attitude and behavior of this sick-minded government towards us Barbadians. I recall as a boy, the right excellent Errol Walton Barrow saying, one of these mornings, we are going to wake up and find Barbados does not belong to us. I am saying to you and to the loyal opposition tonight, those words are no longer prophetic. They are a reality in our time. What we heard earlier in this program is heart-wrenching and should not be allowed. It should never be allowed. Now, the West Coast is gone. Uh, the South Coast is gone. Coming up from the Crane area, the East Coast is going for us. Now, the Bathsheba area, the a major part of the Scotland district that has always been protected 
throughout the history of Barbados. <clears throat> that is now going into the hands of foreigners. I think the time has come when we as Barbadians have to say to the government, you will go no further. We need to have an alien land holding act to prohibit foreigners from purchasing this land. And what we are seeing now is the final stages of the gentrification of Barbados. The West Coast is gone. The South Coast is gone. We are now being surrounded. And you know what is going to happen? We Barbadians are going to be squeezed into the center of this island and they are going to contain us. We will be contained in a small area of this beautiful island and we must not allow that to happen. I am not in agreement with the idea that we can coexist. I think that development should be, it should stop immediately. That is a pristine area of Barbados. And I think that we have a right to preserve it as it is for future generations of Barbadians. The drive to confiscate African lands was the primary means of reducing Africans into a state of landlessness. During conquest and the settlement, Europeans took away the lands belonging to the indigenous people and enacted laws which are measures which were quite brutal to compel africans to quit ancestral lands all that is happening in joe's river simple a continuation of the conquest of the world by europeans and of late chinese barbados must not permit itself to be the victim of neocolonialism again. And I think that that project in the George River area should be scrapped. It should not proceed so that we can preserve that area, that entire area for future generations of Barbadians. We should be preserving the George River area and the entire sea coast for but the, the, the family that is yet to be born. And I think in this case, we need to have a massive civil disobedience to stop this nonsense from going on. Let me just say, this is Miss um, Heather Cole. And Heather is um, in, the, in the diaspora. She's a Bajan living in New York. And she was the one who first brought this issue to the Marcy Week show a, a, a couple months ago. So when I invited her on tonight, you, you came on tonight, um, Miss Cole, and you would have heard from these two guardians here of our heritage here in Barbados. Um, what what are your, your thoughts? What's going through your mind, Heather? Hello, everyone. Quite a bit, Marcia. Development must be for the betterment of Barbadians. If it is not for the betterment of Barbadians, regardless of how many fancy hotels they bring, it is not development. We will not be benefiting. So it would be better if it is not there at all. And in this particular case in Bathsheba, it's just one aspect of things that are happening in Bathsheba. But this is marginalization, pure and simple. It is designed to keep the people out of the area of Joe's River so that they can't be seen. The Town and Country Planning Act was changed. I think it was in 2019. Yes, the act was changed. And the same lawyer who changed, who was working for Town and Country Planning, she was also the lawyer for 10B. The person who changed the Town and Country Planning Act, she was working at Town and Country Planning she was the first lawyer for this 10 project. So she knows what was going on and the prime minister approve of it. So anybody who thinks that is not political, think again. It's an allegation. 
what it is is now that the laws are being made in to favor investors and not locals and they could be foreign investors or local investors but the law has been arranged rearranged to be in their favor and not people's and one thing that i want to mention was from the site plan that mr lewis mentioned was that there is a wellness center there and we haven't discussed that as yet but it is it is meant for the tourists or the guests at the 10b not for locals but what it is is that you cannot build something in the river without an environmental assessment and that was supposed to be done um but in this last their last proposal they said that they are not going to build it so it has or it already has planning permission this is one of the things that they are trained would forego in order to get locals appeased so that they will not they would not they would go ahead with the plan but there is a plan for a wellness center in the river can you imagine that and um, boulders would have to be built to and it's actually going to divert the course of the water and that mm. should not happen before an environmental study when mr i think it was mr lewis again mentioned mr lewis as well as the person who works at the community college i don't remember his name now he spoke about areas around barbados that are no longer that let's say have gone locals can't live there anymore we have been priced out of them and i want to say that my father is from the crane so part of my childhood was spent in the crane and I remember as a child walking through the hotel, dipping my foot in the pool, going down on the the um it's the pair to look out and so on. So back then we were part of the we were locals were part and part of the establishment. And there was a lot of land. And my great grandmother's land was on the boundary, the um the hillside boundary to the main road part of her land was there as a boundary so now they have erected fences walls have been erected on both sides and then there is a road that leads you to the hotel so there are road there are walls on both sides similar to this 10b thing now walls on both sides and just the road and it's it has a guard and you can't get in or anything like that but on the eastern side now, so, sorry, the western side, all of that land did not belong to the hotel. And I don't know how there was this old lady who we used to call Asi and people thought she was mad. She owned a big mm -hmm. portion of land on the, on the western side of the yeah. hotel. But for whatever reason, and she died and she didn't have any heirs, somehow or the other, the land now belongs to the hotel so something went wrong so i'm seeing that the experiences that i had as a child in the crane going all over going down through the monkey jump and places like that the children who live there now have will never have that experience that i had in my childhood and this is not what we want for the people who live in in and around joe's river in st joseph so we have to stop it my yes. son doesn't even know what it felt like to be going on at the crane hotel grounds everything was open there used to be a cricket feel on part of the ground as well nobody yes. can play cricket because there's no room to play cricket, cricket anymore and then what i also want to say to you is that um long pond long pond is also surveyed mm -hmm. and up for sale when you travel from tent bay and you're going towards margin bay that stretch the glen burnie stretch all of that has been surveyed to be sold My and God. i don't think i don't think africans will be the owners well we must stop that too i remember mm -hmm. when i was teaching at the alien school i taught there for two years and there was a young policeman and i took some children on a hike and we went through long pond again that is one of the most beautiful places that there is in mm -hmm. Barbados and it should yeah. be preserved for all Barbadians. It should not be sold. Mm -hmm. So we must do something about that. This is quite 
unacceptable. Oh, does everybody know that rock that is in Bathsheba in the sea, the big rock? I remember when they were yes. the bold and beautiful, had it on their shows a long time ago. Do you know that this rock is being claimed as part of the developers, part of the land that the developer owns? Do you believe that? The rock, the historic rock, you know where it is, right? It was shown on the screen a little yeah. while ago. Yeah. That, that rock is part of the property that the developer owns. Mr. Franklin, are you hearing this nonsense? You're going to tell me that, that that rock, that before I came to Barbados, you used to see it on the <laughs> Coast Guard, that this yes. Australian to come inside of our country and tell us that he owned a rock? You can't own anything um, beyond uh, beyond the high water mark. Um, you know, so you can't the high water mark is there. That's your property. So you can't own anything out to sea. Right. Your the the, the, sea, the, the high water mark limits the the, um, the extent of your property. Mm -hmm. So, but you know, you know, we have a government that can amend the constitution. It could do anything. So you never know. If they will give them permission, and next thing you know, you, you can't even go and take a picture of that rock because you're taking people <laughs> property. Look, <laughs> we have to be careful what is happening around us. We got to be vigilant. That's one of the reasons why I'm here, because I see too much madness going on, and I do not want. I want Barbados to preserve for Barbadians. You're quite right when you're saying that the, the, the development should be for the people. So if you're yes. going to develop, you are, because development is not about money only right. you want to get some money yes but if it means that you gotta shut people up in the in the hinterland so that they're gonna go and people the white people and shake at them you know what i mean that's, that's what you want that's not development that would be getting more money because this government has an insatiable appetite for money and whoever comes and lift up this skirt they will they give them money you know <laughs> look, look at that look at that look at that there, look. <laughs> nobody can't own that that will got to be on the beach further up from the high water mark mr franklin let me tell you i, I tell you now they, they they claiming they own this rock let me tell you they mm. throw big rocks high water mark is where the sea comes up at high water this definitely is in the sea so it can't be above the high water mark um we will we want those in, the, in opposition the leader of the opposition the, the, the senators who are in opposition, use your voices. You're in parliament, use your voices. And this is why we are putting up the email address for Mr. Um, Matthew Holder um, to ask you to send your letters, your letters of disgust, whatever you want to call them, letters of disagreement, letters of, of, of whatever label you put on it. Send your letters that you are not in agreement. Everybody, you could write. Thank God for free education in Barbados. Thank God for for um for for our first prime minister. Right, we all had free education. Hold the Matthew 05 at Gmail. Right, send the letters in. Send it could be a little paragraph. It don't have to be any big thing. All right, send a letter in. Okay, and also get ready for next Sunday. We all roads need to lead down to Bathsheba on Sunday if we mean business. All roads will lead to Bathsheba, you're correct. Because everything Bathsheba, everything is it, Cleaver Cell, Cattle Wash, you know, small town, George River, the whole works. The yes. activity will be done there. So that will be the that will be the the the, the pop lot come Sunday. But if this is your birthright, if this means something to you, someday we should not have place to put cars. That motorcade should be as long from Bathsheba to mm -hmm. Bridgetown. Mm -hmm. or from Bridgetown yeah. to Bathsheba, whatever, you know, you guys know the geography better than I do. He came up, came on the show and told us, and I could not believe it, I told him up, Bring the proof, ask him. I said, show me, they're selling all the East Coast. They're selling all of Bridgetown before long, as Mr. Mr. Um, Newton says, what's gonna happen? 
we're going to be huddled up into the center of the island because we're not good enough to be on the coast. We're not good enough to enjoy the, the, the sea. We know the therapeutic value of the Joe Observatory. We know how it has been beneficial to us all over the years. It is justifiable to think that we will sit back and allow that therapy that has worked for us and will work as part of our intergenerational wealth for our children to come to enjoy. Can we sit back and allow that to happen? This is not politics. This is fact. We can't afford to identify with that, you know, neo-colonialistic mentality. Marcia, this is reminiscent of how our ancestors lost Africa. Because we had the Western Asians attacking from what is today Egypt, okay? And the, the Western Asians, the Arabs, they came across and they conquered the entire north, northern portion of, um, of Africa. This, the, the Dutch went into the south and took over South Africa. Um, the Germans went into the east. The Germans and the, the British went into the east, into Tanganyika and Kenya and so on and so forth. The Germans had um, uh, Southwest Africa, which is now today Namibia, such that uh, the Europeans and the Arabs, they took up all the sea coasts, okay? And they cut off Africa from world trade. And that is why Africa today is so poor and so dependent on the West because foreigners took up all of the coastal areas and squeeze. Okay, you, you hear the term Africa south of the Sahara? Mm -hmm. Well, the Arabs took over from Egypt and forced the African people, because don't forget, the entire continent of Africa was um, black, okay? But the invaders came in, took up the coastal areas, squeezed the African people into the center, and that's why Africa today cannot survive. And I am saying we must not allow that uh, to happen to us in Barbados. Let me, let me go to Pimar, because Pimar is very key <laughs> um, mm -hmm. in, in, this, um, in this whole thing. For me, he's very key because the first person who brought this whole thing to me, I mean, I, I you know, as, as, as someone born in Jamaica, I know that we have that problem in Jamaica. And as I am saying, what we're doing tonight is trying to, um, to nick this in the bud before it gets out of hand. And we are in a position like Jamaica. So I know the problem we had in Jamaica. So when Key Mark came to me and said, Marcia, they're saying, selling up Bridgetown and East Coast. I'm like, no, you mad. And in my mind, I was like, I wasn't too sure he was speaking, you know. I said, show me, Kimar. Bring the, the facts and show me. And he did. So when I heard about this Joe's River um, issue, the first person who came to mind is Kimar. I want to hear your thoughts on this particular issue. Joe's River. <clears throat> um, I would have showed you a picture where the East Coast of Barbados and St. Andrew was for sale by a private real estate company. And we were wondering how this real estate company got um, the beach line in St. Andrew for sale. They heard one of the uh, panelists this evening speaking about East Coast, and I was listening and I was like, yes, uh, he's correct. Um, I, I know that there's documents and discussion going on right now about the entire Scotland district. And the government made changes to the Scotland District Act and they focus on the Scotland District Rehabilitation, uh, which includes from um, uh, St. Andrew straight over to St. John. Uh, and there were some plans and talks with the Chinese to be able to develop um, that side of Barbados. And as we spoke about these zones, is on no policy um, where the government changed the Barbados Water Authority Act to re rejig the zones. 
all of the areas, all of these site areas be, became open for sale. Right? And do you remember the government saying they now have 3,737 acres available for investment purposes? And yes. that and, and that investment decision was under the Office of Planning and Development or Town Country Planning, which was which is headed by William Dugan. Right? But but that office is in the Prime Minister's office. So so such decisions and we will see that based off the slide you just put up, Marcia, which says welcome to Barbados. Mm. It shows yeah. that the Prime Minister was early out in discussions in terms of putting all of these water areas, water prone areas, uh like the rusted east coast up for investment for sale really. Uh, but this this started as far back as Oinasa, you know, where in 1994, they would have passed, the Barbers the Party passed an act for the investment sector bill, which for $35 million, they began to sell out from the IDB. They began to sell out all of the massive chunks of land, plantation land for golf course purposes and for million dollars. Uh, condos and million dollar mansions and they were taking up the good agricultural land and all of the good coastal lands and selling them off uh, to non-nationals for foreign exchange and the same thing they did now they did before change the land zone policies to allow those lands to go up for sale and that is how Barbados ended up with all of those massive and, and as you see St. Peter which was the constituency of the Prime Minister, I think. Let's check the coast of St. Peter, and you will see exactly what I'm speaking about. Check all down St. James, right? <clears throat> and you can see all of those areas blocked up. Check Stanley Lane coming down, all those areas were facilitated to the same investment sector bill. So it, it happened before and it's happening again. And this time, it, it is getting much worse because what we know, all the bridge down, uh, as you can see on the screen, from BDF Bay straight down to Central Purchasing at Spring Garden, that entire coastal area is up for sale and reinvestment. St. Lawrence Gap, they want to put a marina in St. Lawrence Gap. So, so you can see the country is definitely up for sale, and the office of Planning and development this year, which in which they fired the old chief town planner and abolished his office to then create a board which was appointed by the minister so that all investment decisions such like this will come to a board that is put in place by the minister. So we think we think will happen with decisions such like this. Not even the attorney general in which George Rivers in his constituency could do or say anything about it. Right? Because it is these decisions are placed clearly in the Prime Minister's office. And they heard it do these things kind of cabinet. What we have here, Mars, is Harrison Point. Here was Brandon's Beach, Silver Sands, the Crane, Sam Lars, Pigeon Point. That's here, showcasting distinct opportunities within Bridgetown and Carolyn Bay. So just think about how Bridgetown is gonna look. Think about the fact that the government wants to destroy savvy on the bay to turn it back into a car park and that they passed the bill or so instructing uh the people to return back savvy on the bay into a car park because they promised a hotel on the opposite side of the road where the ministry of health building is where the old ministry of health building is you you are selling off central purchasing which is done by kensington way right opposite kensington to build a do expansion of the port with a hundred million dollar loan from the African at Zine Bank. Are you going to build a marina type activity and a hotel right there that persons could drive in the big yachts and get out and walk straight into Kensington Oval? So, so Barbados is definitely changing and Barbados will look completely different um, in a couple of years if this administration is allowed to carry out this agenda. That we can see clearly right in front of us. We don't have to go anywhere. It's right, right here, and they tell us exactly what they want to do in terms of 
allowing hotels and other tourism to investments on these coastal areas and persons living in the areas of Nelson Street and parts of the Bayland, all these people will be moved. In fact, they already wrote letters from Star Country Planning to some people in Wellington Street, letting them know that the land is being surveyed and, and they're seeking to evaluate and, and eventually to, to pay them out. London Bond Towers, those big government towers, those people will be moved. And it was announced already that they want to move those people to put them in the treasury building, the old treasury building that is in Bridgetown because they want to do some test project on putting people to live directly in the city. And the same building that was being condemned as an environmental failure, they want to take people from living in London Bond Towers because they are set to sell London Bond Towers to, for a big hotel that the tourists could just walk straight across the beach and go on to Browns Beach. As we speak, you, we, we can't even go to Browns Beach good anymore because there's not that I even bet I'm happy for the tourist dollars, but there are beach chairs from Boatyard straight up to Bay Street, Lower Bay Street, going all up by government headquarters. The tourists have down their path, <clears throat> so you can hardly get a space on, 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 on Browns Beach, which is good. I'm glad the tourists come in. But you're taking it, not even a step, but way further and saying that they don't want to construct and, and the, the, the place here can show you that every spot in Bridgetown that they want to construct hotels. How are you going to sell, move the army? You're going to sell the army's base, which is a World Heritage Site, a UNESCO site. You're going to sell that for a hotel. And then eventually, and you can mark these words right here on this show tonight, you're going to hear the government saying that the garrison Savannah is going to be up for reinvestment as well. And eventually they're going to sell the garrison too, right? Because they're going to put it under the guys that they want to transform the garrison and, and, and you know, upgrade it. Uh, as some big investor, and I believe the, the investor is going to be from, from the United Arab Emirates because the Arabs are set to build a hotel in Barbados as a part of the PPP airport due to the South Grand Islands International Airport for 30 years. So you heard Martin said on the show before that the Arabs wanted to come to Barbados, but um, Hotel Sandy Lane was a little too small for them, which is which is the biggest place star hotel in the Caribbean, but the Arabs don't think it's good enough for them. So they want to build their own type of hotel, right? So if the government was honest, they could have told us if it is the Arabs they saw the BDF base too. And if they are allowing investment into the Turf Club and the Garrison Savannah to upgrade the track and uh, introduce all type of new things on it because the investment because that hotel that is supposed to be going on the BDF base could possibly the others could be the investors uh, behind that. But this changes the complete cultural landscape of Barbados. And soon enough, starting with this this period high project, where as far back as on half times, and you guys that are much older than me will know this, they were supposed to put a hotel there called the Meridian Hotel. But it didn't happen. So fast forward now. They are saying they want to put some type of lime grove type investment right there after they took away Miss Ram's property by compulsory acquisition. I up to now, no one believe Miss Ram was paid for her property. That kind of was the excuse they used when they took away Miss Ram's property that they, they were doing it for public good. What, what, what public good is taking away a lady's property? Refusing to pay, carry out the land tax so she can be afforded to pay for it. And they say that you, you, in public interest. And up to now, you still can't get the Hyatt bill. We're still waiting for whatever process. We were promised the Hyatt for five times back to back by Mr. Dugate. Just check all the newspapers. And the Prime Minister, the, the Hyatt was supposed to be built since 2018 when they, first, when they first got in. They were promising a speedy Hyatt. But don't forget, <clears throat> Commission filed an injunction to block 
the, the last government from putting up the Haya on the grounds that there was supposed to be environmental impact assessment. When the government changed, the government tricked him. And the government changed the law, the, right? Which is the, the abolish the old town country planning act, passed the new planning and development act. I says that before it said that an environmental impact assessment was legally required by law, you had to do it. And I have to cut you with Kimar because um the government did not trick commission. Commission <laughs> was all together with this because I I told but I said this in the Senate, I said it on, on the radio, and I'm gonna say it here again tonight. Commission was all in this together. He told me outside of my office when my office was on White Park Road that he was never he never opposed to the height. He just wanted to stop those fellows from getting any investment. Meaning that you don't want the dams to get any investment into Barbados. He told me that. And I challenged him to deny it. I've said it too many times and he has never the only thing he's done after that is curse me. And one of the grounds that he um claimed that he wanted to stop it is that it would cast a shadow on his father's grave. But his father is buried in the um the church across the road. Um so so don't um let them fool you. He That's he cool. was part and parcel of the whole scheme to stop the last government from getting any money because you want to keep them poor, keep them impoverished, and keep them une unelected so he could become carry come ambassador. So he he was all in this together. Don't go on, go on, don't don't try to sanitize him. He will not be sanitized as long as I'm alive. Well, I'll take it from you. I take it from you. But he 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 did a job for the government to stop the hiat from being built. And then when the government changed the government changed the law, the legislation which spoke to the environmental impact assessment, which say which obviously you know you have to go around the community, talk to the residents, ensure that it's environmental friendly, ensure that the sea will not come and reclaim the, the land, <coughs> whatever. The law said that you had to get one. It was legally required to get one. And Commission fought the last government on the basis of getting one. And then when the government changed, they changed the law to say no, that the, the minister may require one. Right? So they changed the law to say so step the route. I still can't get the properties up. What is happening in those rivers? It, it is really no different because the, the minister of planning and development, which is essentially the prime minister, who has a secretary in Mr. Dugay, because he's really the secretary of the ministry, all of these decisions, which would have gone to the chief town planner, is now going to the prime minister through the board that she would have appointed as she abolished that old office and established the board to then appoint those people, right? <clears throat> so that is where we need to put our focus. And we really need to support the people in Joseph River, support the people in Bridgetown whose properties are under threat, and to support all of the persons who have land in these vital, valuable areas that the government want to put up for sale <clears throat> and put the focus in, in, in that office, the Ministry of Planning and Development. Thank you. I want to read uh, a portion of a letter, an article by Penelope Heinem, um, who is the former executive director of the Barbados National Trust. Heinem says, don't sell birthright. Barbadians have been warned against selling their birthrights as the country pursues more tourism development. Former executive director of Barbados National Trust, Penelope Heinem, gave that caution as she spoke out against the Miamization of the country. So much of our built landscape is disappearing. For example, the waterfront. We're going to lose all those historic buildings to new buildings, so we have to be careful that we remember our history. She told the nation at Tyrrell Cut um, House and Shackle House Village in St. Michael, where the trust ended its 2024 open house season on Wednesday. Hynam used London, England, and Baltimore in Maryland United States as examples of international cities that have found a balance between historical preservation and erecting modern buildings. It has been done all over the world, she says. Go and visit London, Italy, or Baltimore. Go and visit Toronto in the distillery district. 
1800s buildings have been turned into wonderful coffee shops. We don't have to invent it. We can just go and observe how it's been done. But we sell our birthright in this country. Our birthright is very valuable and we must not forget it. We are losing it. And I call it the Miamization of Barbados. In a little while, we are not going to have any windows to, to the sea left, she said. Heinem, who was also project director at the George Washington House Museum and project coordinator for the open house season, said that that, said that was why the work of the trust was so important. The Barbados National Trust has a mandate to preserve the built and the natural heritage of this island. We've restored Welchman Hall, Welchman Hall Gully, Morgan Lewis Mill, Gunhill Signal Station, Wilde House, Tyrrell Cox Heritage Village and Arlington House. All of these sites have been owned and run by the National Trust since the 70s. The Trust is critically important to our cultural heritage and we hope it can continue to do so because we are losing so many of our built houses now. She added, she said support for their open house season was critical because it was their major fundraiser. And it goes on. Here is the former executive director of the Barbados National Trust echoing every single thing that we're saying here tonight. This is the former executive director of the National Trust. Who, when I called to come out, she said, Marcy, I'm really tired. I've been talking and nobody's listening. Write our letters, write our letters of protest, or our letters of disgust, however you see it, okay? Write, write letters of protest, write letters of disgust. Um, and we have, we have the, um, the, the, the email address contact the hike master holder matthew05 at gmail.com nothing political about this we just disgusted about this whole joe's river thing and we want that wellness for ourselves we we the barbadians want to be part of that wellness taking that nice cool breeze and hearing the water rustle you know against the the, the 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 trees and or the wind against the trees and the water coming down the rocks we want to hear that we want that contentment. We want that mental health. We want all of that too. And if you want that, you're going to write Holder Matthew 05 Gmail, send him an email and register your protest and your disgust about what is happening at Joe's River. In addition to that, we are going to assemble in Bathsheba next week, Sunday. Okay? We are going to assemble in Bathsheba. Yeah, we intend to assemble on the pasture at St. Elizabeth Primary School. Right, so the, the, the plan is because we, you know, this is the whole concept that we will apply to the uh, Barbados Police Service for permission and given the route, the recommended route is that we all meet on the pasture at St. Elizabeth Primary School. We're gonna leave there. We'll travel by Joe's River. We're coming down to the, um, to the Joseph area, and we're coming on down to the bottom of Gagsel. We're gonna go up Gagsel, travel to St. Elizabeth Village. We're coming on down to Beachmont. We're coming into Bashibo, we're going up Cleversel. We're coming through Phillips Road area. We're coming on to Hiswick, and we're coming down to Hiswick, on to the bottom, and then we will have our cookout. All the people in St. Joseph and all of our panelists, we're gonna be down there. I know Heather can't be there. Heather is in New York. She would love to be there. Um, but we're going to be there. Oh, that's me there hiking. This is Thank nonsense. You. This is ridiculous. This yes. is sacrilegious. Cultural ambassador and social activist, the most honorable Anthony Gabby Carter, referring to a wall being constructed as part of the Tembi construction project by Owls Water Limited. Hong and country planning have made a monumental mistake in permitting these so-called developers to come here and uh, build a ridiculous wall. But this is terrible. And this man is allowed, given permission to build this atrocity, this barrier. 
and not only that to build a cottage down here and try to stop the good people of St. Joseph from having access to not only to the teacup and saucer but also to Joe's River itself. It is unfair, it is wrong, it is, a, it is an injustice. He says Barbadians must always have access to the country's rivers and beaches. CBC understands some St. Joseph residents are so upset they are in the process of filing an application for an injunction to stop the construction of the wall. One resident, Stephen Gemma, says he wants the Town and Country Development Planning Office to reconsider its decision to approve this construction. In the past, there were certain restrictions in terms of development along Riverside. One, along the beach side, there was a 100-foot watermark in which you could not do any development within 100 feet of the high water mark. That seemed to have gone through the window. One. Two, there's a setback, what you call an easement, from the center line of the river. That too has gone out through the window. Richard Haynes, CEO of South Central Marketing, which represents Owls Water Limited, was on hand to hear the residents' concerns. He spoke on behalf of the developers. They have heard the, the local community. Um, they are dedicated to the local community. They actually were responsible for fixing the railway trace when it was damaged several years ago. Um, they were heavily involved in the construction of the George River Bridge, um, which obviously is a major attraction down here for locals. And they've heard the people's uh, concerns. Um, they've currently stopped the, the construction of the, of the actual gates on the eastern end of the property. And they are going to sit down there and they basically want to consult with the local community to make sure that when this project comes off, um, is directed, sorry, that everybody is done in harmony with the local community, everybody's happy. Nevertheless, in addition to the legal action, the community is organizing a protest for next week. Heather, um, give your final thoughts on this. What do you want to say to Barbados about what is happening? First of all, it is not, this is not development, so do not be confused, right? And if after a year, the developers can still not put forward a proposal that is suitable for Barbadians. It tells us that they have no intentions of doing one that would favor access to the river. So, and to me, this is just the tip of the iceberg of what is happening in St. Joseph. There are quite a few other things that are going on as well, but we will explore, explore them as we go on. Thank you, um, Heather, and I want to thank you um, for um, being the person who brought this issue to the Marcia Reed Show um, as one of our panelists. Thank you so, so very, very much. I certainly will give my closing comments. What is happening in Joe's River? I liken it to a crime against humanity. And it, I am not in any doubt now that our government is a part of a colonial crime syndicate committing crimes against innocent Barbadians. And I would say civil disobedience is a call to every citizen to value his conscience above his government. Government of any sort, including democracy, does not possess any more wisdom or justice than its individual citizens. That it is every citizen's responsibility to avoid acquiescence. Uh, civil disobedience is a call for all citizens to refuse to participate in or encourage in any way an unjust institution. Barbadians, it is time to raise up and fight. I, I want people to appreciate that these things form part of what we call our patrimony. This is our heritage, our culture. I grew up in a Barbados where I would have witnessed for decades what we call foreign investment and so on. But there was always due consideration to the interests and the needs of Barbadians. The whole notion of access to the beach, public access to the beach in a proper way has always been important. Notions of 
because essentially what you're doing by doing this is you're 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 excluding nationals I, we are not supposed to be bystanders in our country and i really anticipate that if this kind of development continues it's going to create a very negative relationship between those foreign owners and the citizens of this country and i would say the last thing is i'm not sure i saw the clip that you showed with mr haynes and so on who represents the the property owner or the company or whatever it is and i would love to hear from him now because that, that was some months ago i remember seeing it i don't know how long but what is the situation now because he made certain promises on behalf of the owners but it looks as though it is okay and i am watching these things because we are talking about joe's river and i go to the beach as you know five or six days a week uh, in, the, in the week and i am watching a development people have been saying that they're soon going to close off the road i haven't seen any signs of that i will have to go and look but if we're looking at trends it seems as though our interest and our welfare is being put on the back burner or the or, or, or outside of of the whole thing and we, we it's not it does not make for good relations between the nationals and others or even if they're locally owned between developers of certain kinds of development and 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 the people who traditionally have had access in several ways and that has to be maintained yes. if we Thank if we you. are to be true citizens benefit from this country uh, my final comment here is that and Gabby agreed with me that the town and country planning well, well, it's no longer named, called that. It's now called Pla the Ministry of Planning and Development. So the Ministry of Planning and Development, which is in the Prime Minister's office, which simply means that the Prime Minister is the person responsible for these type of decisions. We need some actors, not only actors, but we need some action. So we want, and according to the, the, the guests on the show, listen to what they're saying, they're the residents, they're the ones who have skin in the game. They're the original owners, the, the original investors. And you cannot rob people out of their properties as a custom. I still expect people to have confidence in Barbados that Barbados belongs to them. It's too long we continue to treat our people as third rate citizens, not even second, but third rate, where we take their most valuable jewels from them, sell them off, and then. We Barbados then have to pay to use what belongs to us. Well, people get tax rate toss and tax breaks and every other thing, but we are the ones who have to pay, and we continue to lose our most prized possession. So thank you. Well, I would want to say what I said already and what so many others have been saying, that we need access we need access to the river, to the river basin, to the environs, and in a in a safe space. Not you're not given, or we're not accepting um, the space that you're given, where you're being pushed off to the side where you can fall and hurt yourself and that kind of stuff, just to say that I give you permission or I give you access to what you want. You know, so I I think that it is a worthwhile and worthy fight. Like I said, I've never been into you know, a lot of fights. I never started them. I didn't start this one, but I'm certainly joining this fight to see that what belongs to Barbadians, they have full and free access to it, whether Barbadian or visitor. I would want to encourage everyone to identify with the therapeutic value of Joe's River, Gully, and Teacup and Saucer. And let us appreciate that we will continue to have free and safe access 24-7. And it is our intention, under any pressure, psychological or otherwise, that we are prepared to die on our feet and not our knees. But it's my interim word because I'm coming back. I might be final tonight. 
you know, and my experience with Bathsheba in that area is much different. It wasn't the therapeutic value for me, as such it was, um, I was a young man courting and I would take the young ladies and show them the sights, you know, that kind of thing. And that was, that would help my cause. I, um, I, 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 I must admit, I would take them all down to Codrington College and Canada, but the ducks, you know, you know, the whole thing. So I, I, um, at my, at my first time I have technology college, and college is a ramble. I don't know how they were going, but I was trying to get there. I did though. And, <laughs> you know, but seriously, Barbados is for Barbadians first. We must never be second class citizens in our country. And we cannot bring people to this country and make them more entitled than us. We will share what we have with others, but we will not let them take it away from us. And that is that, that is what should guide us. This is ours. We, we are Barbadians, either born or registered or nationalized. We are Barbadians. And if you want to come here, you got to come here under our conditions. And you can't come and displace us. And I would welcome any development that is friendly to Barbados and the Barbadians. People who live in the area must not be outsiders. You know, in the old days, when they started with the, the, the West Coast, you know, they used to tell the young boys from up and down, saying, don't go down there, they will do something to you. That, that ain't working now. And as a matter of fact, I was a little boy, you know, just have you dog get down there, boy, you know what will happen. So they always found some way to get rid of us. No, they want to get rid of us by making it dangerous for us to traverse the areas that people have traversed that I use as my courtship area and all kind of stuff. I don't court now, but I still reminisce. But we must never lo lose those because I would want my children and grandchildren to have the same, even if they don't have the same guile that I use, but I, think, but I would like them to have the opportunity not to hear about it from me only. I will join you in your fight. I will I will be there. I live, I, as a matter of fact, I live at Castle Grant, so close enough to Bathsheba to make me a St. Josephine. <laughs> I, I spent a few years there. So... I feel like I'm at home, you know, when I go down the, the, the road, the guys, the st youngsters still see me from, um, um, you know, the road from Castle Grant. They will still see me and shout me, but I saw one fella, he's selling fruit, and he said, but you remember me? I said, yeah, and I, I can't tell you what he should do to them. <laughs> but I feel that I must, I must be part of this fight, and I will join you, because it is a worthy cause, because let me tell you something. If I don't come out and defend you and help you, when my turn comes, then got nobody there to help me. And my turn will come. Remember um, the, when I came for the trade unionist, I was, there was no trade, I was not a trade unionist, so I didn't join. Remember that little poem from the Martin Nemola? We have to stand up for our, each other all the time. And, we, and the thing is, it hurts me that we have to stand up against a Barbadian government against a barbarian government against us they should be looking out for our best interests and i don't care who don't want to be political i am political and I, i'm not party political but i mean that i want the best government for this country and right now they are not the best they are coming close thanks to everyone we, we do not want to be forced inland and we can definitely see from the other presentations tonight that it seems as though that is what it, what is happening this is our birthright. This is ours, okay? And um, and so um, this is this is very very important to us. Okay. God bless you. Thank you all very much. Thanks to everyone who joined and um, these wonderful um, stalwarts here in Saint Joseph that's carrying on this torch and making sure this light keeps burning. God bless you all.
But I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. I'm pretending to be good. good, good, good. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people. And I'm pretending to be good at maths nor English. I just pretending to care about people.